I'm Amanda, and this is Not Your Granny's Quilt Show. Happy New Year, everybody! Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. Okay, I'm not seeing you, but you're seeing me. Um, I hope everybody had wonderful holidays, and you got to enjoy some time to do some stuff that you wanted to do. I know I was kind of talking about that of not taking over, not letting the obligations of family and holiday take over your life, but you know, we do what we do. So anyway, um, I'm here to usher in the new year with you and to, uh, tell you, hi, just, you know, update you on things. Um, gosh, we haven't had a guest in a while, but I am working on that. So don't fret my pets. Um, we do have or I do have a great interview happening next week. So, um, I'm really looking forward to that. And I think you guys will be so stoked for that interview as well. Um, so yeah, that being said, um, it was my birthday over the holidays and I know, I know, but, um, I used to get really upset about it <laughs> and that's a bummer because now I feel like people and my family mostly, but I feel like I've made such a thing about it for so long that now like everybody's kind of like on eggshells around my birthday. And that's, I hate that because I created that and that sucks because, well, it's hard to have a birthday right after Christmas. Um, and I think growing up, you know, a lot of my friends would be out of town and yada, yada. I had this whole story in my head about what my birthday was. And so I would like get pre upset about things that didn't even happen yet. And then of course I would manifest those things because of my own behavior. And I'd be like, see, I told you nobody cares. Da, da, da. Like it was just this whole self pity thing. So anyway, um, I'm trying I'm like not even in that headspace anymore. So it's really hard to like convince my husband and my parents, like people who've had to deal with my monstrosity for so long that I really am just like, no, you know, I don't want a big deal. But anyway, um, I did have a nice birthday, um, the day before my besties who you've all met through our interviews and Miranda being part of the show for the first little while, um, they came over to my mom and dad's house with me and we just had a sew-a-thon. We opened gifts because we give, you know, exchange each other's Christmas gifts as well because we, we saw each other beforehand, but we wanted to wait until, you know, we had time with just the four of us. And anyway, that often ends up being my birthday, which is awesome because I just love seeing other people get gifts too. So that's good. Um, so we opened our gifts and then I opened my birthday gifts and we had donuts and tacos and, um, yeah, it was just a really good time. My mom and I bought like a while ago, probably almost two years ago. Now we bought the, um, almost the entire line of little Briar Rose by Riley Blake. Um, and we were like, we're going to make twin quilts. We're making the Tessa quilt by kitchen table quilting. So shout out to Erica. Um, and so we got the first parts, we got everything cut out. We got the skinny strips sewn on top of the taller strips to make all the rows. It's, um, you end up turning, you build the rows, but then you turn it. So everything is diagonal. Um, it's a gorgeous pattern and it's honestly so much easier than it looks. So if you're, if you've been looking at it and you're nervous, don't be, yeah, it was honestly, once we got the strips cut out and did all the sewing, cutting the rest of the bits were, it was super easy. So now we just have to lay it out and sew those, the, you know, the pattern together so we can finish them up. But anyway, so we were working on that and, um, Jen got us all the same bundle of strips. They're some of the, um, like low volume prints from the Firefly line, uh, by Sarah Watts for Ruby Star Society. And I'm obsessed with that line. It's gorgeous. I actually bought the, um, layer cake, the 10 inch stacker from the quilt shop, uh, 
right before, like a couple days before, because I had some Christmas money and I've been eyeballing it and I thought, why not? I get a discount. I might as well just get it. So I did. I bought new fabric. Anyway, um, and so I'm just like, I'm so excited. Anyway, so it's just like a simple strip quilt that Jen got us the fabrics for so we can all have another besties quilt. Um, our first besties quilt is uh, the Jelly Roll Race with the Tula Pink Spirit Animal line. And we all have, you know, mismatch but matching borders and bindings. Um, anyway, so yeah, now we'll have a new besties quilt. And Jen, Jen got hers... Jen and Miranda both got their sewn together and long armed <laughs> at my party. And then I guess we could call it a party, but, and then, um, Beth got her strip sewn together and I didn't even touch mine because my mom and I were working on our, our sleeping beauty stuff. So, um, anyway, but it's just strips. It's super simple and they turn out gorgeous. So I'm going to do that soon, but I was so stoked and, um, I got a bunch of puzzles and, you know, just things that it's like, feels, it feels really nice opening gifts that just are you. They fit your personality. They fit just who you are as a person. And my besties get that. They get me. So, and you know, my parents, my husband, like I got so lucky <laughs> with the people I've chosen to surround myself with in this life. And, um, it was just a really good reminder of that. Not that I'm not reminded daily, but, or even that I need reminding because I wake up just so freaking grateful for this life I have. And anyway, it was just really fun. So we sewed and sewed and sewed. And then the next day was my actual birthday and my husband and I were cleaning up some water damage, which is so fun. <laughs> um, in our guest room and thank goodness we found, we think the culprit. And so we're kind of getting everything patched up back together, but you know, tearing it apart is easy, but putting it back together is not as easy. So anyway, um, but we went tubing on the, at a place called Eagle Island here, near here, um, where we live and they have four, like tracks at the tubing hill and they make snow to make sure that they can, you know, stay open until like March. And anyway, I was like, I just want to go do something fun. I'm tired of cleaning carpet and <laughs> all this, the cleaning stuff we were doing. So we went and did that and, um, yeah, it was just a good relaxing day to spend with Abe and we went to breakfast before that and all this stuff. So anyway, it was just a good time. And, um, yeah, but I think I told you guys in the pre-Christmas episode that my mom was finishing my Christmas quilt, and she did. I posted a picture of it um, on the Instagram because she did. She freaking finished it for me so that I could have it for Christmas, <laughs> and it still tears me up a little bit because I just, it means a lot to me that she would set aside time doing stuff that she wanted to do so that I could have my quilt. And, um, yeah. So we had decided to travel up to my grandparents' house, which is about five hours north of us. And so, um, I took it with me and I kept it close by so I could snuggle in it and watch Christmas movies with my grandma and, you know, just be cozy as we were spending time with the family and, um, it was really fun. Like everybody came, my, my brothers, two of my three brothers came. My sister already lives up there. So she was there. And then my, one of my uncles who lives close by to my grandparents, he came with his family. And so it was just really fun. Cause there was a lot of us there and we got to do a big gift exchange and you know, we do it like white elephant, but it's good gifts. And so it gets wild because we fight. I mean, not physically, but there's a lot of yelling, <laughs> a lot of yelling. Um, yeah, so that was a good time, but yeah, I didn't, I mean, besides, you know, working, I didn't really do sewing for myself besides like on my birthday. Um, so I think that is going to be one tricky thing. I th think, 
to figure out for me is just having and making time to sew for myself when I want to, um, because we're so busy with jobs and because I also am working still part-time at the quilt shop. Um, I, I'm sewing, I'm quilting all the time. I'm just not necessarily doing it for myself. So <clears throat> that is something I kind of I want to start considering in, in my schedule is one of my setting side, aside time for me to just do my hobby for me and not for someone else. And as much as I love doing it for other people, it's like I start to get kind of that like, oh, stressed kind of like pressure in the chest. I guess you call that like anxiety or panic. I don't know, <laughs> but just about like, what am I doing for myself? And, and not to say that in a selfish way, because I think I put a lot out there for other people and I am always looking for ways to take care of my family and looking for ways to take care of, you know, the people around me. And so it is really, truly, um, going to be something I'm working towards this year of putting myself first more often and not in like a selfish way, but just in the way that I'm making sure that my needs are being met because I'm really bad at that. And so I'm still figuring out what that's going to look like, but I definitely do want to sew more for myself. And if that means I need to schedule out a day, you know, once a month or if it's more often or less often, I don't know what that looks like, like I said, but I definitely do still want to make that happen. So, um, even my mom, after our sewing day, she was like, we need to do that like once a month, just have the girls over and just get a bunch of sewing done because we kind of help each other out. Like, you know, some of us were sewing, some of us were helping each other pin quilts. I was helping set up pantographs, you know, helping with the thread and that kind of stuff. And we were just kind of bouncing around, but everybody was getting so much stuff done because we were all there supporting each other. And, um, it was really great really great. So I think that would be fun if we could make that happen. Just do, you know, once a month and, and just do a crafting day where we just focus on that. So anyway, I think I don't want to say a resolution, but I think just a goal to start thinking about me what I want <laughs> instead of always doing things for other people. And I shouldn't say always because I do, I do things to take care of myself. I've gotten, I have gotten a lot better at it. Um, but I am still working through some stuff that I think ultimately will help me find a better balance of doing what I love and spending time with the ones I love and, you know, still helping people because I do care about that and I do still want to do that so anyway that's um that's that <laughs> uh yeah I just wanted to welcome in the new year say hello I'm still around I'm ready I'm ready for this year it's gonna be wild um you know new things popping up and kind of trying to figure out how to rearrange things so that they work better. But I think that's just life in general. You have to do that all the time. So it's nothing necessarily new. Um, but yeah, I think for this year, 2023, it's going to be about me. <laughs> Is that ridiculous? Probably. That's okay. I'm a little bit ridiculous. That's um, part of my personality. So anyway, yeah, I, if if you're thinking about, you know, ways to incorporate doing things for yourself, share some tips and tricks you have. I, I'm just looking for a system that can kind of work for me. I do love structure. My life doesn't afford a lot of structure, but where I can find it, I love it. Um, it really helps me, you know, stay the course and not get trapped in, you know, a social media vortex or whatever. So yeah, share what you've got, what, what kind of things help you remember to put yourself as a priority more often and, you know, do, do the things you want to do. I would be 
greatly appreciative of any advice you've got to help me on this little journey of mine. So, you know, we got to take one step at a time. Well, I'm going to stop gabbing at you. Um, like I said, I've got a great interview scheduled coming up. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I'm going to try to get a lot more people signed up to chat with me. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, go check out, um, the previous episodes of interviews we've done. I know Fran Gulick of Cotton and Joy, she just released a new fabric line and then she just announced her next fabric line that's coming out. She designs with Riley Blake. So she's been on the show. Go check out the patterns that Holly at Holly Clark Designs has put out. Her handle's at, at Hold My Seam Ripper. Um, I'm trying to think. Katarina Rochella has some new patterns and she's announced new fabric coming out. Who else? Who else? I know Erica at Kitchen Table Quilting. She's hosting a quilt along soon. I think Emily Dennis at Quilty Love is hosting a quilt along soon. So there's lots of cool stuff going on out there. Um, you gotta go find it. And, uh, yeah. So if you haven't caught up on previous episodes, do that now. Okay. Catch up with us. And then we'll see you guys next week with a new episode. I hope you are well. I hope you are happy. And if you're not, here's a hug from me. Hugs. And I will catch you next time. Thanks for being here and happy new year. Bye.